Hey friend, this is Jamie at www.fromhispresence.com. I'm here today to encourage you out of verses in the Bible on the Christmas story because we are celebrating a royal Christmas this year, a royal Christmas celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and learning from the story of how he was born and learning to apply the truths that the Bible tells us about that time. So today I want to talk to you out of Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20, and this is what it says. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Friend, the verse I want to point out to you today is verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. You know, Mary had seen a whirlwind of activity for over nine months. Mary had seen the angel Gabriel come and appear to her, announcing the birth or heralding the conception of the Christ child. Mary had been to visit Elizabeth and had seen how Elizabeth was in fact pregnant with a miracle baby that was John the Baptist. Mary had probably endured some persecution for being pregnant but not yet married. She was only betrothed to Joseph. Mary had had to endure a tough journey being extremely pregnant, a tough journey into Bethlehem, the house of bread. And then of course the heartache of, oh no, I'm going to give birth to my baby. I know this baby is the Messiah, but there's no room for him in the inn, as we talked about in an earlier video. Well, friend, there was a lot going on in Mary's heart. But you know what? As these events continued to tumble one onto the other, it says here, Mary didn't go about blabbering about it. She didn't call her 10 best friends. Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. Now there's a time and a place for talking to your friends and your family about the things that are going on in your life. But you know, some things are so sacred and so holy that we have to keep them deeply in our heart. A.W. Tozer said there are some things too sacred for any eye but God's to look upon. And that's such a deep concept, you know, when we think about God, maybe the secret that you're telling me and the things that you're showing me, maybe it's just for me and you. Maybe when the Bible says in the Psalms that we have the secret of the Lord, that the secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him, maybe it's called the secret of the Lord because we're supposed to keep some things a secret. Maybe God enjoys communing with you about things that only you and He know. Could that be? And I've learned over the years, friend, that there are some things that when God is birthing in you, it's better to keep them in the silence. There is something about silence and about privacy when it's a good thing, you know, I'm not talking about any kind of sinful hiding of things, but something about silence that can act as an incubator, that can act as a potting soil, a form of potting soil for revelation and a time and a place for the Lord to deposit deep things in you, show you deep things, do a great work of healing in your life. All of these things don't work quite as well and they don't flourish and thrive quite the same way when you get them out and just show them to everybody left and right. When you trumpet in the streets, hey, this is the promise that God gave to me. There are lots of reasons for that. I mean, think about it. Number one, you're going to pretty soon come across some haters, some doubters, some folks who are not quite as into your promise as you are. And their negativity can often really discourage you. And it can drain your faith right out through your toes sometimes. I wish that weren't true, but I think you've probably experienced it just like I have. But you know what? If you keep these precious things from the Lord in your heart as Mary did, 
and you ponder them and you pray over them and you just turn them over in your heart, looking at them from all sides and praying about all facets of the situation, the promise, the thing that you're birthing. So many times God will be able to move faster. He'll be able to move more strongly and he will keep that birthing process going. Whereas if you just throw it out there to the world, but God hasn't given you permission to do that, you very often lose the unction that you had. You very often lose the passion that you had. You lose the excitement, although you still have the promise, the impetus that you had to chase it, to believe God for it, to fast and pray over it, to sow into it, to take action, to start that business or to work on that ministry or to study that revelation or to memorize that scripture, to write that song or to even know God in a greater way, perhaps even in a fasting and prayer season where you're just seeking God and you're saying, Jesus, you're my bridegroom, king and judge, but I want to know you as my bridegroom right now. Come away with me, my beloved. If you talk about those things all the time, very often, unfortunately, you can abort the deep work that God is trying to do in your heart or you can delay it. So I want to encourage you today, just like Mary, when God is doing a deep work in you and showing you those great and mighty things that you do not know, keep those things. Ponder them in your heart. Don't share them unless God gives you the green light, the permission to share them. And it will make all the difference in the world. Friend, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. It's a beautiful season of celebration, celebrating the Christ child. I want you to know God loves you today. He loves you so much that He sent His only begotten Son to die for you, to, to live a perfect life first, and then to die for you, but He didn't stay in that grave. He got up after three days, resurrected, and now He ever lives to make intercession for you. Do you know Him today? Just pray this. God, I love you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I give my life to you. Forgive my sins. I make Jesus my Lord and Savior. Give yourself fully to Him. He won't turn you away. He loves you. He's been waiting for you. Friend, thanks so much for watching this video today. Have a very Merry Christmas. And remember to celebrate our Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, during this royal Christmas.